Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and it's finally time to check back in on DC Collectibles Bruce Tim Designer Series. I'll be looking at the Joker, as seen in Batman the Animated Series, and one of the first figures after the initial wave. You see, Wave 1 had some problems, and DC Collectibles stepped the hell up to the plate and delayed everything to fix the lineup with far sturdier plastic types and all major points of stress and articulation. The first four figures were New Adventures Batman, Two-Face, and Mr. Freeze, alongside B-Task Catwoman. Those four Wave 1 figures have visible pins on the fronts of their hips. Anybody without visible pins on the fronts of their hips has reaped the benefits of improved materials. Apparently, this will be the way to tell improved high hypothetical Wave 1 reissues apart from their original, more fragile releases. If you're worried, look for Smooth Hips or anybody who wasn't in Wave 1. With all that spiel out of the way, the Joker figure maintains the goddamn awesome sculpt quality that I saw way back in Wave 1. He looks incredible, from head to toe, front or back. He, uh, okay, yes, there's a scratch there. That was all me. Turns out those purple pants are painted white plastic. Who knew? I sure did, after I tried carving off some inner knee plastic that got a bit mushed up in the joint. Anyway, the paint is pretty well done, provided you don't literally shave it off with a hobby knife. The tones all look spot on to the animation to me, and clashing delineations like those between his orange shirt and just about everything else look fairly clean. The facial paint apps are like triple clean on my copy, highlighting the legitimate victory of this figure's head sculpt from just about any viewing angle. Even in profile, Mr. J is brimming with BTAS style. Huge props to Irene Matar. I did cherry pick my figure off of a shelf, so I'm not sure if there were some real bad examples out in the wild, but worst case, DC collectibles seem to stand by their products. So if you got a super bum one, send him an email. Mr. J has got a lovely ball jointed neck uh, with expression that makes me super pleased. Like, this thing just looks good when it's doing its neckial thing. And it's probably my favorite joint on the toy. He's also got lovely universal shoulders with a little bit of soft detentory, and uh, they can go forwards and backwards. This coat piece is a soft PVC that gets out of the way real well, maintains the shape and everything of his uh, yaka. His uh, elbows are on somewhat less soft detents, and they can bend almost 90 degrees. There's a built-in bicep swivel. There is a wrist joint that swivels as well. There is a hinge on the wrist. And with the new construction on these guys, these feel fearless. Uh, in general, all the joints, as I understand it, have now got a more durable material. I think it's a palm material, if I recall the blog post correctly. Uh, there is a cut waist swivel that the tail of the coat, due to its soft durometer, can get totally uh, flexing around as you work it. He's got like, super high cut-up T-crotch action going on with his pants. Uh, it means he can sit happily, and uh, he's got that, I want to call it Mattel-style outwards joint. Uh, this leg's a little bit loose, but this one is a little bit clicky, and I'm not sure how across the board that might have been. No thigh swivel. Uh, there is a knee joint that bends nearly 90. I tried to get it to bend 90, and I thought it was made of purple plastic, so I tried scraping some material, and you know, that's my story. What's your story? And then his ankles are just shoe cuts. They are just like pegs rammed up into the tubes of his pants. They suck. Uh, first thing I want to say is the posability is like, imagine the Kenner toy, right? Only slightly better. So it's like an improved version of the Kenner toy. As long as you're holding him, like his poses can look real fun, real wacky. The ball jointed neck is fantastic. Uh, it's great. He just can't ever stand because he's got tiny feet and they only swivel left and right. They're a funny shape. If he's not got his legs standing stock still together, I very rarely find a way for him to stay standing. In fact, even when they're stock still together, due to the shape of the heels and everything, and the fact that the ankles don't tilt forwards or backwards, I have to find a hip position that works right, which means I can never really get expressive uh, curvature into his main body like his spine uh and it's just a it's a bummer because everything else kind of works and i i'm i was astounded that the ankles did like nothing uh it's it drags the toy down immensely uh also i still really think there should have been a thigh swivel uh that, that could have helped with this and when your elbow joint looks like this for the sake of this i feel like you've crossed a rubicon and it, it's you know it's not in service of the sculpt but it's for functionality's sake a thigh swivel of some kind is it would only be a boon so 
This Joker, like he's this is this is where I'm gonna say it. Like after that first wave, after the break, these feel fantastic. It's just that this guy is also the one that introduced me to the notion that the posability across the board is not going to be uniform. The Joker comes with the series standard display stand, featuring an excellent animation model turnaround on the base, and a terrible flimsy armature that has two huge dumb prongs sticking out of the back since Joker doesn't have a cape. I really don't understand where the design and delivery of this stand's armature is coming from. It sucks. The rest of the accessories all come from the episode The Last Laugh, and Joker's fishbowl gas helmet makes for a great storage bowl for all of his spare parts. That's actually my favorite part of the accessory deal on this guy. I mean, yes, you can also put it on his head. Now he's wearing a fishbowl. Hooray! Joker includes two extra pairs of hands in addition to his fists, one set for ham fist gripping, one set for careful thumb and forefinger gripping. The wrist pegs are beefy as hell after the lion's materials upgrade and feel ribbed and badass to pop in and out. The knife and comb accessories can be held in either style of gripping hand, though I usually go careful grip on the comb, full fist grip on the knife. He also comes with a telescope, and his articulation renders him incapable of using the comb or the telescope properly, which leads me to question whether the right episode was chosen for this figure's loadout in the first place. He is able to hold his stolen pearl necklace alright, but man, all of these extras either don't speak to me or can't be held in a decent pose by Mr. J, other than waving them around. This is a well-done figure that has actively tried to push me away ever since I opened the packaging. His sculpt is superb, his paint is amazing, but his articulation was surprisingly limited after my experience with Wave 1's Batman, and his accessories are almost entirely a wash. I still like this figure because god damn it, I want to like this figure, but his value proposition is terrible in the face of how forgettable just about every extra piece has turned out to be. He's probably the best Tim-style Joker figure we'll see in a long time time, but I wish DC Collectibles had aimed a whole lot higher with his accessories and articulation. And when I say articulation, I almost 90% am just talking about his feet. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I hope this video has helped bring you up to speed on the improvements to this line if Wave 1's rickety builds had turned you away entirely. It's still not exactly what I want it to be, but the Tim Designer series has its hooks firmly embedded into my face either way.